can you share some of your, I guess, the latest technology in sports sinus for those that aren't aware of yeah, some of the tools you have access to? There's a whole heap of technology out there. Some of it's sports specific, some of it's just more broader business tools. So true database tools, generally the, the coding language we run there is SQL. There's a bunch of platforms that can be used running SQL from free programs like Microsoft SQL Server, which is what we used in AFLW for a number of years. There's probably some other tools that we use, again, not specific to sport, tools such as R and Shiny. They're probably some big ones for us to try and build applications or visualizations that are a little bit more bespoke and require a little bit more technical know-how. The other side of things, we, we use Tableau. Tableau is a great tool for us there to just visualize data. It doesn't really allow you to put any, to write any data, but allows you to visualize it really effectively. From an AFL perspective? Talk us through some of the critical metrics that you commonly look at through day to day to, I guess, prepare a squad for, for an upcoming game and, and across the season. We probably have a suite of 10 metrics that we're looking at more so than others. You've got your distance stuff, so your, your, your volume's an important metric. And then your banded velocities, your high speed, your very high speed, your sprint, number of efforts in amongst that, your, your maximum velocities and percentage of max velocities, your and then your sort of power metrics, your axles, your D-cells, and your change direction stuff, we use IMA as our measure of that. Um, something that we've started looking at a little bit more is how our training load is comparing to our match load. And we've tried to simplify this concept into something we're calling game relative data. What I mean by that is pretty much using uh, a player's match average as a bit of a baseline. And then taking a training session, a week, a month, a year, and dividing it by that game average. Over, it's a long competitive season. And you mentioned where you know, you're looking at rolling average and you're looking at the acute change. What's a particular red flag in your mind? Let's use the example of the groin squeeze, I guess. And you're just looking at the rolling average and across a year of the groins and compared to perhaps their max. Yeah, we've got sort of three layers of flagging that we use. We look at the the rolling average and the acute change, and we use 15% as our, our drop from that. So off a rolling 28-day average, if it's more than 15% below, we'll pick that up as a flag. If it's an acute drop of more than 15%, we'll also look at that as a flag. And then also a new one that we've sort of brought in is two successive drops of more than 5%, reducing the margin of the decline, but trying to pick up the trends. So if there's successive drops that then bring them below their average, that's probably the other important criteria there. If it's two successive drops of more than 5% that then sit them below their average, we want it to flag. The way we interpret the flags is probably really important there. A red flag does not mean you're not training. A red flag is simply a prompt for a conversation generally between myself and a physio or myself and the high performance manager. Bold equipment, what other pieces of equipment would you be exposed to that I guess practitioners need to be aware of if they want to be a, a sports scientist or even an SNC at you know an elite sport these days? Yeah, there's there's a whole heap out there. Uh, I can only really speak to what we use at Carlton. Um, Vold's a big one. Um, using their their Nord board, their Force Frame, their Force Dex, and their Dynamo, probably to a lesser extent, probably a bit more physio specific. That one, they're pretty pretty basic bits of equipment that all students who come through at Carlton will get an exposure to. So they're probably the the foundational ones. The GPS technology is obviously a big one. Being able to operate really effectively using catapults software. That's a, a really important skill set. Again, something that students coming in the door, I spend a fair bit of time teaching them. Do you see it as more of an opportunity to make a bigger impact and, and create more efficient systems or is there is AI a threat to you know practitioners? I don't see it as a threat in any way, shape or form. I'm, I'm reasonably strong on that one. I think that it will be hugely impactful in sport simply because of the pace that we operate in elite sport. AI doesn't change what information you have. It just changes how you use it and how you can bring it to life. Yeah, if you have a huge broadsheet of information, you know, in our football world at quarter time, we have, I think it's seven minutes. You cannot consume the amount of information that an AI could consume, you know, the first two minutes before you then have to go and make meaning from that information. So I see AI being a hugely useful tool purely because of the speed that it can consume information and make meaning from it. The information will still need to be collected. It will still need to come through a person to be delivered. So I just see it as a really useful tool in our space. 